Okay, this video is going to review insulation and all of its parts it may go a little long, but we'll try to get it all into one video. So insulation is incoming solar radiation, another famous made of earth science word, uh, talks about the amount of sunshine. So whenever you see insulation, you're dealing with sunshine. So the first issue to deal with with insulation is its angle. And the greater the angle of insulation, the more intense the sunshine will be. So if you have an area where the angle is very high, in this case 90 degrees, the sun the sunlight will be condensed into a very small area and it will give you a much higher intensity. So this small area will have a higher intensity of insulation. In that exact same amount of sunlight, when it hits the curve, the angle is much less, right? This angle is less here, so if you look at this angle, this angle is much less, and the sunlight is more spread out, therefore it is a lower intensity of insulation. Here's the exact same idea, different diagram. Okay, the angles coming in are the same. You can see how much more this is spread out at the north northern end of the globe compared to near the equator. So this has a lesser concentration. Okay, exact same idea, now a little more complicated, get some numbers involved, but if you measure these angles, right, this angle would be 10, right, this angle would be 40, this angle would be 75, this angle would be 90, right, and this shows you where all that sunlight is condensed into. At the equator, condensed into a small area, and at, with a 10 degree angle, that same amount of sunlight is now spread over this amount of area, therefore it is not as intense, and the temperatures are cooler. Same idea, different diagram here. Okay. Now, if you deal with during the course of one day, as the sun rises here in the east, the angle would be very low as well. So sunrise would not be as intense. However, if you deal with it uh, across a year, this would be the summer. This path is for this fall and spring. And this path here is for winter. The angle is lower in winter than it is in summer. 26 compared to 73. So in the summer, our angle is much more intense. Sunlight's more intense. One of the reasons summer is warmer. So the angle of the sun changes based on latitude, based on season, and based on time of day. The higher the angle, the greater the insulation. The next concept is duration. Duration is even simpler. It's time. The longer the sun is in the sky, the more it can hit the ground, and the more insulation will be received. So again, this line here is for summer, and the path is much longer. Remember way back from, from chapter 1, the sun moves across the sky at 15 degrees every hour. So if you have all of these degrees, you will need more hours. The sun's in the air longer, it warms the surface more, temperature goes up. Now, depending on different latitudes, so pay attention to the latitudes here. So at the equator, North Pole, and 90 degrees. So at 50 degrees, similar to us, okay, these are the paths you'll see. It'll rise and it'll sink. If we were at the equator, however, the sun would rise straight up, and it will sink straight back down. And the, each of these paths, the red, green, and blue one, are all the same. So this, the equator always gets 12 hours. They get 12 hours of duration of insulation. And then the opposite happens here at, the, at 90 degrees north, where at some points in the year, the sun is literally always in the sky. They can have up to 24 hours of sunshine. But the, the angle is so low that it's never intense heating, and it never really warms up at the North Pole. So duration is really simple. The longer it's in the sky, the greater insulation. That's really it. And then we talk about what happens when the sunlight hits stuff. What, What's the effect? And it can affect several things. The color of the object can affect what happens. Darker materials will absorb more heat uh, quicker. So they heat up quicker, as you can see in this little animation. Right? Along with the texture of the surface, surfaces that are rough in texture will heat quicker. There's more surface area for the heat to, the energy to hit and warm it up. And then what it's made of. So land having a lower specific heat 
will heat up slower, uh, faster, sorry, faster than the water. It has a high specific heat. So the water is slowly warming, the land warms quickly. All right, so this sums that up, right? The darker the color, the faster it's able to absorb the heat. So dark is fast heating and fast cooling. Lighter color is slower heating and slower cooling. Then what happens when it hits the atmosphere? So sunlight coming in, you don't need to know the numbers too much, but the sunlight coming in, some of it will be reflected back into space, some of it makes it to the surface, and some of it gets absorbed straight uh, in the atmosphere. Now, we also have a little uh, layer of the atmosphere called the ozone. It sits in the stratosphere, and it is made of oxygen. It's, it's, it's oxygen molecules, O3 molecules, and they block ultraviolet energy. So you see all this UVB, right? You may see that written on sunscreen. It diminishes through the ozone layer, and only a tiny bit escapes down to the surface. That ozone layer um, blocks some of that UVB rays, which would be very damaging to our skin. Uh, so luckily, it's there, which is why the ozone layer tends to come up in environmental conversations. So if you summarized all this up, okay, here's what we're looking at. If you compared water to land, the specific heat of water is high. That means it will heat slowly. The specific heat of water is low. means it heats quickly. And specific heat is another way uh, you can kind of also call it density, right? So reflection, water reflects energy on it, right? The sun that comes down and just bounces off the water, right? And therefore, it heats slowly. The, the land is, is dark, so it does not reflect as much, and it heats faster. Water is a little transparent. The energy can move deep into the water, and it heats slower because it's heating a larger amount of, of material. The land is opaque, it's solid, right? So the, it heats the surface, and that kind of condenses and concentrates the energy into the surface of the water, right? So convection, as the heat enters the water, that energy can move around within the water itself, helping it to even out, keeping it from heating up quickly. That doesn't happen in a solid. You can't have convection in a solid, so the energy is condensed at the surface. So as a summary, right? Water heats slowly, land heats quickly. On your reference chart, you'll find specific heats, and you'll see that liquid water has a heat of 4.18, whereas air, a specific heat of 1 something, and then you get all the things that you would make up, uh, you know, the surface of the earth with, uh, rocks and iron and metal, very, very, very low specific heats. Right? So harmful wavelengths are blocked by the atmosphere, land and water heat different rates, and specific heat equals rate of speed of heating. So then we have another word here called albedo. Albedo is a fancy word for reflection. Things that have a high albedo tend to be things like snow and water, ice, uh, deserts. Uh, they tend to be light in color and very uh, smooth, the smoother the better. Things that are dark in color or rough, rough surfaces, right? They're like forests and blacktop and grasses, tend to reflect very little. Here's uh, two uh, landforms, same amount of energy coming in. Here we have 20 and 10% reflected with 70% absorbed. Here on the white snow, only 10% is absorbed. One reason that snow melts, snow remains on the ground even after it's a couple sunny days. So if we compared the uh, poles to the equator, um, the albedos are different, the angle of the suns are different, the angle of the sun is different in, in both places, and another interesting idea, as those energy rays in the sun, right, if the atmosphere is here, right, there's more atmosphere to get through in order to get to the ground at the northern elevation, uh, alt northern latitudes. So, and every time it's passing through the atmosphere, more and more light's being scattered away, making the end result even weaker. Okay, so you can see that this line here is way longer 
and the lines down here. Right? And all along the way, the, the air is getting, the sunlight is getting weaker and weaker and weaker, blocked by the atmosphere. Right? If you put ash and dust in the air, that'll reflect away energy as well. So large volcanic eruptions right, can can put huge clouds of ash into the atmosphere, which can reflect away even more sunlight, causing a cooling in that region of the world. So albedo equals reflection. The poles reflect sun and stay cold. Dust in the atmosphere can reflect even more sunlight, which leads to even more cooling. So then we have the greenhouse effect, not those greenhouses. The greenhouse effect is energy being radiated back out from the Earth, but being trapped by the gases in the atmosphere, specifically carbon dioxide and water vapor. Naturally, the greenhouse effect keeps into space, uh, keeps in Earth about the same amount of energy we get in. So there's a nice balance. The natural system has a balance. Since humans have been uh, adding more and more greenhouse gases to the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels, there is now an unbalance, and we have more. We have more heat being trapped, right, on the surf uh, at the surface, causing the Earth to warm up. So if you look here, um, atmospheric CO2. This is carbon dioxide measured over the last several decades. The, the rate is just dramatically rising. So up and up and up and up and up and up and up. And then that is followed by temperatures that is good that are going up and up and up and up. So take a look at break down this graph here. Variations of Earth's surface temperature in the northern hemisphere, year by year data. The black line is about a 50 year average. This goes back um, the year 1000 all the way to the year 2000. This is a thousand years of history. And you can see the temperature line swings up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. That's fine until you get to about where we are. And that temperature line has reached all the way up here. And it's projected to go even higher. So the Earth is warming. The greenhouse effect traps heat. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. UV waves pass through the atmosphere. Infrared cannot pass back out. Earth's temperature has warmed in the recent past, and burning fossil fuels creates CO2. Hope that video was helpful covering all the topics of insulation.